Hey uh, folks, uh, this statistics lesson is a binomial distribution. So section 4.2 in our textbook that we're following. Let's go ahead and get started here. So uh, binomial experiments have two different outcomes. That's why it's bi. Bi means two. So the outcomes are, uh, this book likes to say success or failure, but on or off or left or right, boy or girl or red versus not red, something like that. So success, failure, so failure. there's only two, two outcomes. So they have to satisfy these conditions to be a binomial experiment. So there's a fixed number of trials, So and then each trial is independent of each other. And there's only two possible outcomes, success or failure. Okay, and the probability is the same for each trial. Okay, and the random variable x uh, counts the number of successful trials. Okay, so here's our notation for a binomial experiment. N is the number of trials. P is the probability that will be successful in a single trial. Okay, and Q is the complement of that, so take that off of 100% or 1 minus a, point, or a decimal of what P is, okay? And then X is the random variable for the number of successes that you're searching for. So it could be 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, and so on, all the way up. It could all the way up to whatever N is right there, okay? I have several examples. So... Here's an example here. So we pick a card from a standard deck of 52 cards, and we our success is if, it, if it's a club, and the failure would be it's not a club. So then we replace it, and we do it five times. So N is five on there, okay? And then uh, our success is um, uh, since a fourth of the cards are clubs and three-fourths are not clubs, then uh, P is our success rate, which is one-fourth, and Q is 0.75, okay? So the random variable X represents the number of uh, clubs that are selected from the five trials. So we could have um, uh, zero, uh, club, zero of them would be clubs, one of them would be clubs, or two, or three, or four, or five, okay? So for instance, if X equals two, then exactly two of the five cards are clubs, and the other three are not. Okay, so notice how uh, we can count these numbers, so these are discrete random variables. Okay, you can hear it's break time right now, so you hear the kids in the hallways out there. So determine whether the experiment is binomial. If it is, identify the values of n, p, and q in the list of possible values of the random variable x. If it's not binomial, then explain why. Okay, so a certain surgical procedure has an 85% chance of success. So there's P. Okay, a doctor performs uh, the procedure on eight patients. There's N. The random variable represents the number of successful surgeries. So that would be X. Okay, so... Um, so and then and then this we'll talk the other one separately here. So here we go. So yes, that one's binomial because it satisfies all four conditions. Because um, there's only two possible outcomes: either they succeeded or they failed. And we did have a number of trials. The n was eight. The probability was 0.85 for each one. It's the same for each one. So the failure would be one minus the 0.85, which is 0.15. Okay, and then uh, our, our random variable is uh, zero, zero successes or one success or two or three or four all the way up to eight. So that's what X represents. Okay, here's number two. A jar contains five red marbles, nine blue marbles, and six green marbles. You randomly select three marbles. Okay, so there would be N from the jar, and it says without replacement. Okay, right there, that just kind of that nullifies everything because if it's without replacement, then the second uh, marble that you pulled is, is totally dependent on the first marble. They have to be independent of each other. Okay, the random variable represents the number of reds, okay, that we pull out, okay? So, so our success would be red, but since it's not, deep, uh, not independent, it's dependent because we're not replacing it, then it's not a binomial experiment, okay? So the probability changes also. The probability of pulling a red is 5 out of 20 marbles. But as soon as you pull that out, then it's no longer 5 over 20 because you leave it out, it says, without replacement. So the probabilities aren't the same either. So that's another nullification that it's not uh, binomial, okay? All right, here's one. Uh, uh, rotor cuff surgery has a 75% chance of successes. Okay, you're going to hear the bells going here. I have prep period next, so this is my chance to do this. The surgery is being performed on three patients. 
So there's a N right there, and, and here's P, 0.75. Find the probability of the surgery being successful on exactly two patients. That is X right there, okay? So here, we're going to go ahead and draw a tree diagram and use the multiplication rule, okay? And you're thinking, what? Okay, remember doing a tree diagram? So the first surgery, and then we got the second surgery, then we got the third surgery. The first surgery was either a success or failure. Okay, this is 75%, this is 25%. Or I think I used fractions. This is three-fourths and this is one-fourth right there, okay? All right, so then the second surgery. Well, we could have had a success on the first one, but we have a success or failure on the second one. We could have failed on the first one or had a success or a failure, okay? So we have, we have um, two more choices, success or failure right there. And let's say we got a success and then the success and the third surgery could be a success or failure, success or failure, success or failure, S or F, okay, for all of them. So there's eight different outcomes, okay, here they are. We could have had success, 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 or S, S, F, or S, F, S, that's what all of these stand for right here. Okay, so we want to find the probability of being successful on exactly two of the patients. Okay, so we want the ones that's exactly two, okay? So we want, here's one with exactly two, here's another, here's another right here. Okay, so this one, uh, remember, success is uh, three-fourths of the time. So to have all three of them being successful will be three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths, okay? This one is... Three-fourths times three-fourths times one-fourth. That's what all of these say right here, okay? So we want the ones with exactly two. So two would be the probability would be nine-sixty-fourths because we multiplied each probability. Here's another probability of two is also nine-sixty-fourths, but for different ordering right here. And then here's another one that's probability of two. It's also nine-sixty-fourths, okay? So, um, uh, so if we have uh, each of them has a probability of 964, then we multiply the three times that we can do that times 964, and we get 2764, which is 0.422. Sorry about the noise in the background back there. Okay. All right. Here is the binomial probability formula. So. Uh, the probability of exactly X successes in the last uh, example was two successes in N trials. In the last one, there was three surgeries right there. Um, is um, uh, P of X, so this would have been P of 2, is N choose X, so this would have been 3 choose 2. Whoops, I moved it a little bit, sorry. And then this is uh, uh, 3 fourths to the X, which is to the 2 power. This would have been 1 fourth to the 3 minus 2 power or um, uh, to the 1 power right there, okay? So in the last example, we would have got that, okay? So here is um, NCX is this stuff right here. Okay, so 3 factorial over 1 factorial times 2 factorial. This is just... Um, um, 3 factorial over 2 factorial, which is, uh, that's just going to give us uh, 3 right there. Okay, and then over here, this is 9 sixteenths. Okay, 9 sixteenths times 1 fourth is uh, 9 sixty fourths right there. So we get 0 0.422. Now, there is a program in your, in your graphing calculators that shows us how to do this. I'll show you that shortly. So here's another one here, you guys. In a survey, uh, uh, U.S. adults were asked to give reasons why they liked texting on their phone. The results are given below. Seven adults who participated in this survey. We've got one more after this, you guys. Sorry. Are randomly selected and asked whether they like texting because it's quicker than calling. So create a binomial distribution for the number of adults who responded yes. Okay. So we got to find out uh, how many responded yes of the seven adults. And so how many of them exactly zero of them responded yes? Exactly one of them responded yes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so a probability, a binomial distribution would be to make a, a chart with this. Okay. So, um, and then we wanted to know um, uh, seven adults. Uh, what was it? Um, Oh, it's right here. Because it's quicker than calling. So uh, quicker than calling is 56%. There's P right there. So that means Q is 44%. Okay. So from the graph, 56% like texting because it's quicker than calling. So P is 56. Q is 44%. So because N equals 7, our possible values are 0 people would choose that. 1 person, 2 people, all the way up to 7. Okay. That's the last bell right there. Okay, so there's the formula if we plugged in P equals zero. 
and we get about 0 0.0032. There's the formula for P equals 1. And we get about 0 0.0284. Okay, now right now my kids don't have graphing calculators, so they're they're actually writing this out. This would be 7 factorial over 7 minus 0 factorial, which is 7 factorial times 0 factorial. Remember, 0 factorial equals 1. Okay, and then um, uh, so this would be 7 factorial over 6 factorial, 1 factorial. Okay, anyways, we get these probabilities. So the probability that 0 of the 7 would uh, choose that would be this. The probability that one of the seven would choose that would be this. And then two, we have to find them for all of them. So there they are for all of them right there. And then so our probability distribution would be here's x equals zero. The probability is that. Here's x equals one. The probability is that. And so on and so on. So there's our probability distribution right there. And notice that all the probabilities are between zero and one. Um, and also they add up to one right there. So there's a probability uh, distribution. All right. Okay, you can hear the class next door. There's not very, very much insulation between the two classes. So. In a recent survey, 67% of adults consider air conditioning as a necessity. If you randomly select 100, so there's N, and this is P right here, so Q would be 33. Okay, so what is the probability that exactly 75, there's X, adults consider air conditioning a need? Okay, so, so here we're going to do P75, uh, 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 so it's 100, choose 75. Here's P to the uh, X power. Here's Q to the N minus X, so 100 minus 75 is that right there. Okay, and then our calculators, you guys, if you have a calculator, specifically a, a TI calculator. I, I'm not aware how to do the mini tabs right here, but I do know it's either there's a couple of places you can find binomial PDF. Make sure you find binomial PDF, not binomial CDF. That is something different. That's later this week, you guys, binomial CDF. We're doing binomial PDF, okay? So binomial PDF right there. So find that, and it's usually, I think it's in, there's a math button on your calculator, and then scroll over to probability. Or you look down in the, uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. Or you can go to the VARS button, capital V-A-R-S, and it's somewhere in there. Uh, so just look for binomial PDF, or you can, of course, go down to the catalog, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. I think it's a, let me see, i got a calculator here. Let's see. Uh, so uh, this is an old TI-83 calculator. So catalog is right above the number zero. So you've got to hit second function catalog and then scroll down. It's in alphabetical order. You should find it, binomial PDF. Okay, and then you plug in, uh, so, so when you do binomial PDF, it's this, you guys, binomial uh, PDF, and then you're going to plug in N comma P, whatever P is in decimal form, whoops, my cursor went over, I'm on this little rink -a dink laptop here, P comma, and then um, X goes right here, the exact number right there, okay? And then you hit enter, and once you do that and you hit enter, you should get uh, 0 0.0201, okay? And what does that mean? I always interpret that. So the probability of exactly 75 adults considering air conditioning a need is about 0.02. And because 0.02 is less than 0.05, that's typically our threshold to consider whether it's an unusual event. Uh, then, then we can consider that to be unusual. Now, if you got like 0.08, it doesn't mean it's usual. It just means that we cannot say it's unusual. Okay, anything typically that's less than 0.05 is considered unusual. Okay, all right. A student asked me today, what if we got like 0 0.07? Could we say, what would we say about that? And I'd say, well, what you could say is at the 10% threshold, it would be considered unusual, but at the 5% threshold, it would not be considered unusual, something like that, okay? All right, so it doesn't mean that it's, it's usual, it just means that you can't consider it to be unusual. All right, sort of weird. Uh, let's see, a survey indicates that 41% of women in the U.S. consider reading their favorite leisure time activity. You randomly select four U.S. adult women. So there's X, uh, N, I mean. 
and ask them if reading is their favorite leisure time activity. Find each probability that exactly two of them respond yes. Here's X right there. Okay, so if we do that, uh, we go ahead and plug that into our formula, and we get about 0.351. Okay, and the next one said, uh, what did it say? Um, uh, at least two, I think. Yeah, at least two of them. So we've got to find the probability of two, three, four, um, and so that would be, um, then we add all those together because it says at least two. This is the probability for each one. So if we add them all together, we get uh, that at least two. It's going to increase it a bit. So we get about 54.2% uh, or 0.542. And the other one said less than two, I think. Fewer than two people responded. So that would be zero people or one person. So each one of those probabilities gets us that right there. And then we add those together. So we get about 45% or almost 46%. Okay. About 10% of workers in the U.S. Uh, commute to work by carpooling. We randomly select eight workers. There's N, and P is 10%. So what's the probability that exactly four of them? So exactly four when we select eight. Okay, so four would be X right there. Okay, so we can use a table also. Okay, so if we go to Appendix B, and I think it's on page A8 in the back of your textbook, you'll find uh, table two up there. And we're going to be referencing to this table for the rest of the year right there. Over here, we have a column for n's, n equal two, three, four, five, six. So, so scroll down to eight right there, and x equals four. Okay, I had some kids go to 0 0.01. That is 1%. We want 10%, which is 0 0.10. So scroll down here, and we get 0 0.005. Okay. So um, uh, that's our answer right there. So the probability that exactly four of the eight workers carpool to work is 0 0.005, and so that's less than 0 0.05. So we can certainly consider that to be unusual. All right, so for a binomial distribution, you guys, the mean, which is your expected value. Uh, now, we had some old formulas, and you can use those also, but these are a little bit quicker. If it's binomial, you just multiply n times p, where p is um, our probability. For the variance, it's npq. Okay, and for the standard deviation, we square root that. Okay, so here we go. So um, in Pittsburgh, about 56% of the days in a year are cloudy. Find the mean, variance, and standard deviation for the number of cloudy days during the month of June and interpret that. Okay, so here we go. So June has 30 days, so that's N. P is 56, so Q is 44. So um, the expected value is NP. So, which is 16.8, uh, so that's so about 16, 17 days are expected to be cloudy there. The variance is 0.74 NPQ, and the, and the standard deviation is the square root of that, 2.7. Okay, so if this is my mean, that's the expected value. Okay, and I was doing this with my students. I drew a bell-shaped curve right there, and in the middle I put 16.8. And then I subtracted 2.7, 2.7. Okay, I forgot. It's like 11 something. And I went back here and then I went plus 2.7, plus 2.7. And if it's below two standard deviations uh, from the mean, it's considered unusual. And if it's above two standard deviations from the mean, it's considered unusual. So these are cloudy days. Okay, so, so if we add... Um, on average, there's about 16.8 cloudy days during June. The standard deviation from the mean is about 2.7. So values that are more than two standard deviations from the mean are considered unusual. So if we take off 2 times 2.7 from 16.8, we get 11.4. So a June that has 11 cloudy days would be considered unusual. And similarly, if we added uh, 2.27, I think this is supposed to be, I think, you guys, uh, let me see, i got to calculator right here so sorry I think I calculated that wrong and I forgot to correct that so I'm multiplying 2 times 2.7 and I'm going to add that to 16.8 um, uh, so plus 16.8 Oh, that's good. I guess we're good. Okay, I made, a, I made a mistake in class today, not with you guys. So anyway, so that number is correct. So anything above that, so a day that has 23 cloudy days would also be unusual, okay? All right, you guys, if you're in our class, that would be your assignment. Take care.